Hi, in this video, let's learn how we can build an AI generated text identifier from scratch. There are so many large language model providers. Uh, you might have used OpenAI's ChatGPT, Anthropic Cloud, or even Llama 3 from Facebook Meta. There is Google Gemini. So there are so many different LLMs. And when you read text-based articles on internet these days, whether it is LinkedIn posts or blog articles or even news, it sometimes um, makes you wonder is this whether this article was written by AI or not. And it sometimes reduces the value of uh, text-based information. And if you have used ChatGPT a lot, you must have noticed that it loves using certain words like delve, embark, leverage, tapestry, underscore, there are so many such words uh, that will often come up if you try to write an essay using ChatGPT. And uh, this actually affects people if you are trying to uh, make a job application and if you write the cover letter or if you are applying for a PhD or master's position and you write your SOP statement of purpose using ChatGPT. It's very easy for someone to figure out as a human, uh, it's very easy to figure out if this article sounds human or not. Uh, but still, it's difficult to say with some, some certainty and it'll be amazing if we can have a systematic way of predicting if a certain text-based data or text-based article is written by AI or not. And this is a graph that was an interesting study which shows the excessive usage of the word delve, uh, which, which started since um, ChatGPT was released. And you can see that there is almost an ex, uh, an exponential increase in the use of Delve. This is mostly in scientific articles, their title and abstract. So um, this can also affect the way we write. So if we are exposed to more and more articles which are written by AI, we will also tend to use such such words. And even if we are uh, we are writing an article ourselves completely without getting the help of any AI tool. If we end up using some of these words, which are very commonly used by uh, AI models, it's likely that someone who is reading what you have written might perceive that what you submitted or what you wrote was not authentic. Um, there were even cases where papers which were submitted to prestigious journals from big publishing houses were retracted because the article was seemingly written using generative AI. So here in this particular article, which was actually retracted, you can see the first sentence in the introduction. Certainly here is a possible introduction for your topic. So I mean, in this case, it's obvious that um, the authors unfortunately use ChatGPT. Maybe it's it's fine to use ChatGPT as long as whatever is written is correct and authentic. But here it was too obvious that ChatGPT was used without citing its usage, perhaps. So um, for various reasons, the paper was retracted and this has this is not the only instance such things happen. So it's becoming very important for organization as well as for individuals like us to identify um, how, you know, identify whether something is written using AI or not. And um, if you are reading like an abstract of a paper, how do you even know if AI was involved in writing this piece of text? It's it's incredibly difficult. Sometimes you also know that ChatGPT can give very human-like response. So it's it's very difficult to make a prediction. And sometimes we don't really care if something is written really nicely, uh, if it reads really well. It doesn't it doesn't matter whether it was written by ChatGPT or a human, as long as the information is correct and not fake. But uh, that's not the case in many. Um, other areas. So in this video, let's learn how to build an ML model for this. So essentially, we'll be using AI, we'll be building an AI model for identifying AI. So it's it's funny. And uh, we'll be um, having a very specific case, um, a very specific use case in this example. There are so many different websites, which now allows you to predict whether uh, with you know certain percentage confidence an article is written by AI or human and what we are doing in this uh, video is building a similar model which can allow you to make a prediction of course you can deploy this model if you are interested as a web, web application or into hugging face so we learn about the basics of how to do this so our workflow looks like this first we have to identify a good label data so what does that mean 
it will be good if we can have us have a data set which has text or sentences written by ai or written by human labeled very nicely so it's like a binary classification uh may, maybe if it is zero it's uh, written by human if it is one it's written by ai something like that so we need a huge data set then we need to set up a nlp pipeline natural language processing pipeline don't worry about this it's uh, i'll not go into the basics of this but i'll just show you how to uh, implement this in practice using code then training on the data set then we'll do some testing using the test text uh, data and one interesting thing which we can do here is we can try to implement a technique called explainable ai and specifically within explainable ai there is a technique called lime lime is local interpretable model agnostic explanations so using lime we can explain the reason why the nlp model said that a particular text or a particular sentence is ai generated or human generated so we can try to derive some sort of explanations and see if some some interesting things can be observed and we'll of course also play a little bit by providing our own test data we can probably copy paste some paragraphs from internet or our own articles we can see how that how that goes so we'll need two things here we'll need a hugging face api and we'll be coding in google collab um, don't worry if you don't know what is hugging face i'll briefly walk you through what exactly is that so let's get into building the building the algorithm slash collab application um, we'll start to code but just before that i'll walk us through hugging face and how do we get the data set this is the hugging face website just go to huggingface.co and it has mainly three things models data sets and spaces so models are ml models which you can use directly um, and it's classified into different categories multi-model computer vision nlp audio tabular etc there are data sets which which is where we will find the data set that we need Again, it has computer vision related, NLP related, audio related data set. And there is something called spaces. In spaces, you can host your own AI application in a community and you can get feedback. They might really love your application and there are various different applications. So just check this out. In our case, we will be using um, a data set belonging to NLP. So um, you can click data set and click text classification i found this data set after looking at it a bit and here i'll search human and then there is a data set uh, by nikolai this one's i don't know how to pronounce the surname so this is the data set that we'll be using let's walk through the data set a little bit but before that um so this data set is in relation to the bachelor thesis written by Nikolai Thorer Sivesind and Andreas uh, Benzen. So it has labeled human produced and machine generated um, samples. And here there are two types of data sets. One is a uh, data set corresponding to research abstracts. And if you click this, you can see there is also a wiki labeled. I think this is from... Uh, wikipedia let me just check if i'm correct or not um there is okay i don't know if it is wikipedia necessarily it is yeah it is wikipedia okay so there are these two data sets so wikipedia data set is much bigger it has 300,000 rows uh, research abstract has 20,000 rows so it has one two three four four columns first one is title second is label third is text and fourth is word count in this for our purpose we'll be only using the label and the text so text is this um, uh, abstract itself label is zero or one zero means human uh, produced and one means ai produced so you can see that the data set is very balanced F almost 50 percent data set is human produced and 50 percent is ai generated and um, the text is over here so these two columns will be useful for us and one more thing that we will need uh, from hugging face is the hugging face token id uh, 
So for getting the token, and this is this is needed because this particular data set here, you can see that it's a gated data set. It's not a public data set. So um, to, to access this data set through Google Colab, you will need a uh, API token. So to get the API, click on this icon, go to settings and go to access tokens. And here you can uh, create the token. So if you if you want to copy the value of a token, just click here, invalidate and refresh, then it will create a new token. Just copy that, that token uh, ID. You will need that when, you, when we are coding the uh, this uh, code in the Google Colab. So that's about, that's all about hugging face uh, that you need to know the data set itself. Maybe we can just have a a, a quick look at it. Um, I I strongly believe this is a legitimate data set. Um, it's very hard to verify, right? Even uh, the legitimacy of data set is uh, difficult to verify. But since this is also part of a thesis, um, and uh, I hope it's it's legitimate, and the AI generated samples are generated using gpt 3.5 3.5 turbo i don't know if gpt 4 has been used so we'll be using the chat gpt research abstracts uh, half of the samples are human half of the samples are uh, gpt generated now let's go to the google collab notebook i have already coded it uh, almost all of it and uh, we'll be only walking you through that instead of uh, spending a lot of time coding but don't worry i'll be sharing the link to this uh, collab so that you can copy it, modify it and run it on your own data sets. So first we have a few packages to install. Pip install Lime. So Lime is the explainable AI module for local interpretable model agnostic explanations. Don't worry if you don't know what exactly is Lime, it is not uh, very crucial for you to know. So I will start from scratch. So you can also follow along. So I will maybe restart the runtime. uh maybe delete and delete the runtime then i'll have to reconnect most likely the reason why i'm doing this is i just want to show you how to do the collab to hugging face connection okay so here i clicked connecting to a new runtime maybe i can use a t4 and once this is connected we should be good to go Okay, so the runtime has been connected. So first let's do pip install lime. That's, this will install the uh, explainable AI module. And after this, we are doing pip install data sets. So this data sets is where we will get the hugging face um, data set from. And then we will be installing the while this is finishing, we'll be installing the Hugging Face Hub. So this is the Hugging Face Hub library. Uh, we will need this for um, getting the data set. And then after this, we will import a notebook login from Hugging Face Hub and then call the notebook login function. So when we call this function, a pop up will come up. And here they're asking for a token. So what we need to do is go here and copy this token ID and paste it here. That's what we are supposed to do. So I will do the same. So I have pasted my token here and then click login. Then login will be successful. So now we have um, connected Google Colab with um, Hugging Face. Next, let us import some libraries. We'll of course need NumPy, Pandas, uh, OS Seaborn for plotting and uh, scikit-learn for various purposes and Lime and then data sets from the load data set, uh, load data set from data sets. Um, then let's run the library importing. So as this is finishing here, we are loading the data set, right? So usually uh, when we load the data set, uh, it will look something like this. So we won't have the, the second argument to the load data set function usually. But here in the in our data set, if I if I if you remember what I mentioned, there are two subsets. One is the research abstracts labeled and one is wiki labeled. So here uh, we have to 
provide the, the uh, that argument mentioning which subset we are looking at so we are looking at the research abstracts labeled research abstracts so let's run this so now data has been downloaded we can just print the data set just to see how it looks like so you can see that in the data set there are 1400 training samples 3000 sorry 14000 training samples 3000 test and 3000 validation uh, we can do few things either i can just use the train and split those 14000 into train and train and test um, or i can use train and test separately so then i'll have 17000 total amount of data 17000 i'll have i won't be needing the validation data set so maybe initially i will just use the training data set only i'll split it into two um, to create the train and test um, but it should it's not a big problem to use both train and the test so first uh, we have to create a pandas data frame that's what we are doing here and from the data set we are taking the train so train means uh, as you see here only this right now so uh, so you need to provide that subset here and then we'll be printing the uh, ds df.info this line of code i have added because when i was working with a few different other data sets i noticed that there are duplicates um duplicates meaning two rows the the text corresponding to two different rows are the same so that is not good right so i wanted to avoid duplicates but i don't think in this data set there are any duplicates so it's okay to even remove this line but but let it be there then we can display some info about the data set so here you can see the data set the index 0 1 2 3 4 this is the text and this is the label don't worry if you see that these two things are looking the same i don't think they are the same uh, if we can go to the data set there is some difference uh, uh, yeah so this is just the title the text is completely different so we are only using the text we are not using the title and uh, yeah so text is this so for text in all the rows are different because we have we have ensured that the duplicates where text is the same if at all any other have been dropped and there are total 14000 data sets because that's how much what was there in the training data set and here uh, we just print how many human generated and ai generated texts are there so if you remember here it showed exactly 50 50 uh, human generated was 50 and uh, ai generated was 50 so that's exactly what you see here so total 14000 out of which 7000 7, human generated and uh, 7000 ai generated this piece of uh, code which i have commented are for removing some punctuations and um, some characters like uh, slash and etc from the text but let it be there i'm not too bothered about it uh, if needed we can come back and maybe uncomment that and run and here what i'm doing is so first i'm defining uh, the the data points and labels so data points are the, only the text data which is which are which is this column and the labels are zero or one which is this which says whether it's human or ai generated and then what i'm doing is i am uh, so if you remember the data frame df only had the training data set meaning uh, only had this data so the data frame df only loaded the training data so i'll be using these 14000 and i'll be splitting that into 70 percent of that i'll use for training and 30 percent i'll use, use for testing i just find it convenient because of the way i wrote the code when i was experimenting with some other data sets but it's very easy to to incorporate the other 3000 test data also so here for testing i'll keep 0.3 30% and remaining for uh, training and here what i'm doing is i'm making sure that the uh, index of x and y values like data and label for training and testing are sequential so i can just show if this was not there what would happen is um, we can print x train if i print x train it would look like see the index is not in the order so here we are kind of ensuring that the index is continuous so if if we print that here you will see that the index is in the order 0 1 2 3 4 so that's pretty much it and after this uh, this piece of code is again not really needed because we know that duplicates are not there so i'll just delete this okay so so far we have done everything with respect to 
data set. So we organize the data. Uh, it's it's very clean. We have now training data and test data. Now we will build the NATCH NLP pipeline. So in this block of code, we are defining the NLP pipeline using the vectorizer, TFIDF, and the naive Bayesian classifier. So vectorizer is something where the English text is converted into uh, vector tokens because uh, computers generally cannot process English language. You want, you have to represent it using numerical using a numerical representation and vectorization or vector embedding is the best way to do that. So here we do that. Don't worry if you don't know exactly how this is done. That's not the most important thing that we are trying to learn in this uh, lecture. TF-IDF transformer is uh, term frequency and IDF is inverse document frequency. So this is uh, this is a technique which is used uh, in the natural language processing. This is very universally, universally used even if you are building a chatbot for your restaurant or something like that. So it's you will see TF-IDF transformer very commonly in NLP pipeline. And multinomial NB, Navation, is the classifier which classifies the data. So let's let's set up the pipeline, and now we will fit the model uh, using the pipeline. So the model is x values, which are the text data in the training, and y values, which are the labels in the training. So let's run this. So training the model should not take too much time. Our data, first of all, is not very big, right? It's only mm, twenty thousand rows, and here we are. Um, making the predictions on the test data. So X test is the test data. So we are making the prediction and Y prediction are the predicted Y values and Y predicted probability is the um, for each, if the if the prediction is, let's say, for on a test data, if the prediction is, let's say, that text or the, that abstract was written using AI, probability is how, by what percentage the AI is confident or this model is confident that it's AI or whether it's human. So we'll, we'll print it to see how it looks like. So the reason why I calculated or I stored the Y predicted probability is because uh, in some data sets, I was actually getting very close to 100% accuracy. So I really wanted to know 100% uh, meaning this NLP model was able to predict with 100% accuracy uh, on the test data, whether some whether a text is written by AI or human. So then I was suspicious. I just wanted to see whether the the confidence also is 100% or which are the least confident predictions. So here I'm plotting the least confident predictions by AI. In, don't worry in this case anyway, the in this case, the, um, you know, the accuracy is not close to 100%. So in this case, we don't have to really look at the least confident predictions. But yeah, the least confidence is 0.5 because it's a binary um, classification and the highest confidence will be close to 1%. So um, I'm not spending too much time on this because it's not too much relevant for this data set. But here, let's see a summary of the classification. So in summary, the uh, accuracy is not, I guess I have to add the accuracy here. Just give me a moment. So the total number of actual mistakes is 81 in this case. Um, so we can print the accuracy score it's 87 yeah it's actually shown here it's 87 percentage not too bad uh, we have around uh, 30 percentage of 14,000 which is how much is this I guess it's 40 um, 4,200 uh, if I yeah it's 4,200 so we have 4,200 test data points so not too bad i would say the accuracy is uh, in in any case our, our goal is not to build the most accurate um, nlp model for identifying um, ai generated versus human generated our, our goal is to kind of build that architecture so that we can fine tune and make the model better okay so that is done so now we have the model now let's do the tfidf vectorizer so here um, actually this is uh, the test data but it will call it as validation data, but um, actually we are using the text text data here. So we'll do the use the TF-IDF vectorizer, which we will need um, in the Lime uh, explainer. So Lime explainer is the explainable AI module. 
which can explain which words in a particular paragraph contributed to it being classified as AI or it being classified as human with some weightage. So I'll show that in a moment, then you will understand exactly what that means. So we are first defining the two class names, zero is human and one is AI. And here we are building the Lime text explainer. So this Lime text explainer is, is imported from the Lime uh, library. Uh, you should see that here so this is the lime text explainer and from that uh, using that we are defining the lime explainer show so let's run this and then what we do here is we are creating a, a random number so we generate a random number between one and the length of the mm, the y test array y test is the length basically the length of that will be length of test data and we are generating a random number between that and using this random number, we will, I'll make, actually, let me comment this out. Yeah, so using this random number, we will be generating the explanation. So random number meaning that random number will correspond to a particular test data. And using that, we'll be generating the explanation. So let me run this. So now explanation has been generated using the explainer for the particular test data set whose position or index is that particular random number and number of features equal to 10 meaning we'll be uh, displaying that many and we can we can now print several things about the line or even about the characteristics of the prediction so first let us look at the line um okay so this part actually let me comment a bunch of other things so that you don't have to look at all the different things while looking at the Lime prediction. So ex uh, we are sh actually showing the Lime explanation in this format. Okay. So firstly, the prediction was made at 85% con uh, confidence that it's AI and 15% confidence that it's written by human. What is written by human or what is written by AI? This thing, this piece of abstract, this paragraph, is the input text in the testing and um, the our model says with 85 percentage confidence this is written by ai and 15 percentage by human now what lime is explaining here is these blue color if the blue is dark blue so those words so in this case axp i have no idea what is axp but that word is somehow contributing heavily towards making this uh, paragraph look like human human written paragraph whereas an sgr is also contributing a little bit whereas these words govern insights understand research somehow the usage of those words in this paragraph in this context is making it appear like this is ai generated text um, and i think what we can do is let us look at whether this was actually AI generated or human generated because if you remember our, our models accuracy is only 87 percentage so maybe this is a wrong classification so let us actually have a look at that um so i think we have to print the y label of um i guess We have to print the y label of prediction index i guess let's see if it is actually zero or one so if it is one that means all of this is correct if it is zero probably uh, oh sorry i'm using the wrong bracket y label is not defined ah oh, i guess it's sorry it's uh it's y test not y label Okay, so it's predict it's um, here is the uh, actual label. So the actual label is one, which is corresponding to AI, right? Uh, so one means AI generated. Yeah, one means machine generated slash AI generated and zero means uh, human generated. So in this case, the actual label is one, mean, meaning this text, this piece of text is actually AI generated and 85 to eight, with 85 percentage confidence, the prediction is also that. And what we can see here is these 
uh, words that are highlighted in orange color they are the ones that are contributing the most towards uh, making this into a ai generated or making it look like an ai generated document uh, we can run this again now it will generate another random number and it will generate another random prediction we can just see what it looks like so this is again i guess uh, okay it's it's generating the same thing uh, oh sorry i'm supposed to run this first yeah so this should now generate a new test data point okay so new test data point so this is another one this is again ai generated uh, this time traceability is the word that is contributing traceability supply chain those are contributing to this being human rest these things are contributing to it being ai um, i would love to see a human generated text rather than ai generated text and see what whether it makes sense so this is again ai generated let's okay so this one says 57 it's not highly confident but it says 57 percentage this is human generated 43 percent ai generated so you can see the words that is contributing it maximum to to be classified as a human generated and here actually we are printing the top 10 features so um we can just delete this because this is not needed um so if you look at this top 10 features and their value so whatever is shown in this this plot this sidewise bar plot is these are the numbers and in this case let's see what is the actual label whether it is zero or one okay actual label is also zero and it's predicted as more human so prediction is correct um, but still it's not very confident it's only 57 percentage probability so this is um, exactly how we can make a um, make a ai slash human generated text identifier this is this particular nlp model for identifying this kind of a text mainly from abstracts it's 87 percentage accurate of course we can make it better and i would love to try this on some abstracts which i know are human generated so i'll take an abstract from my own paper so um, this was a paper which i published and this abstract was 100 percent written by human because i wrote it and let me see if this will sound like ai or not so what i will do here is instead of defining a random number i will uh, okay actually i have already pasted it here so this is the abstract from my paper i just pasted it here and instead of testing on this x test uh of prediction index i'll just test on x test new because this is that x test new my abstract let me run this and see how much the model says this is ai generated okay it says it's 44 percent ai generated so it's interesting i don't know which words that i used are contributing to this approach demonstrate removal challenge dust so this approach word is contributing maximum to make it sound like ai generated demonstrate is also doing that uh, there are a few other words so uh, panels here last 95 these are all words contributing to contributing a lot to this uh, sounding like human if we want to see more such words but i mean these words anyway have a uh, decreasing weightage so even if i printed uh, another 10 words which are relevant in this lime explainer it probably won't matter because it's its relevance will be less than 0 0.02 so but but here we can see that um, somehow the way i have written this um, before even chat gpt was out is sounding like how maybe chat gpt would have written it so it's very interesting um, i can uh, try pasting other abstracts i'll i'll play with this for a while for sure but uh, i invite you to also try this out yourself uh, so two things you can do one is in the data set here you can try some other data set so i will definitely try later with the wikipedia data set that is a much bigger data set so that is one thing you can change here from research abstracts label you can change it to uh, wiki label wiki underscore label so you, you can do that that is one thing second thing is you can use both training and test data set so this will increase i'm pretty sure this will increase the accuracy of the model from 87 to maybe 90 95 
who knows so you can try that and um, you can also see what else can be done which other pipeline nlp pipeline can be used for this uh, what else can be done to make it better and then you can do the testing uh, using some other abstract so if it's wikipedia data set then i i hope it's more generalizable you can copy paste text from anywhere to do the testing here i did the testing using abstract because the data set was the, the training was done on abstract scientific uh, literature abstract so that's why i did this but this anyways this is a great uh, exercise and you can also easily host this as a web web application if you're interested in fact uh, some of these um uh, you know hugging face models if i if i type hum, human here there are some applications which people have hosted uh which says if i if i click text classification and human uh human text categorization i'm not sure if this is the yeah so this is this is one model <laughs> i don't know what should i type um solar panels have an unbelievable water print so this will show once the model is loaded um the model which these guys have hosted here it will show percentage uh prediction of whether this is ai or human so label 0 means i hope it's human and label 1 means ai um, but if we co probably copy paste something from chat gpt it might show that higher percentage is label 1 i i'm not sure whether label 1 means ai or human in this case i hope it's ai but this is what you can do so uh that's it um hopefully you learn something from this um exercise just try this out and let me know how it worked for you thank you and we'll see you again in the next video